Thank you, sir, for that warm welcome. I think that's too much <laughs> for introduction. Anyway, I'll be talking on the taking on, a syst uh, on this complicated system that's a vestibular spinal system. I just happened to be on a trekking this early this week, and then when we were going to this double decker root bridge, and we were had to cross this kind of a bridge, so you know everything was swaying. Then that was uh, when you realize that how important is your balance system to keep you standing erect. So when I'm, uh, as we go into this topic, I would just like to cover a few, uh, I mean, talk about a few important points here. One is that we all know how important it is in humans and in animals, uh, how the, uh, the proprioceptors, uh, proprioceptors from, the, from the limbs, from the legs, they help in recruiting the muscle response. And, uh, but this corresponding effect has not been well described in related to the vestibular inputs. And unlike the ocular, reflexes, the spinal reflexes, they cannot be tested independently for the, the strength in the, uh, in the vestibular inputs. And again, unlike the ocular reflexes, the proprioceptive uh, reflexes cannot be switched off, which means that uh, if the uh, proprioceptive from the ankle is deficient or deficit, it is taken over by the, the knee or the hip. <coughs> And uh, again, because of the difference in the site of origin of the vestibul uh, vestibular spinal tract and the pathway in the, along the brain stem, so you cannot uh, quantify the, the response or the contribution of the vestibular spinal system with the, uh, with the, from the amplitude of the vestibular response. And again, the rate of compensation is again different. Coming to slightly to the anatomical considerations, once once we activate the labyrinth, they set uh, sets of uh, muscle muscle res, uh, response, and these are linked by different tracks, which include the vestibular spinal tract, the red, uh, reticulospinal tract, and again, from below upward is the vesti uh, the spinovestibular tract. Uh, the medial vestibular uh, spinal tract. They, these are uh, bilateral tracks. Okay, they run bilateral. Most of these uh, fibers they originate from the descending uh, vestibular nuclei. That's a, uh, the major uh, component arises from the descending, with a slight contribution from the lateral nucleus and the medial vestibular nucleus. And towards the lower end of the medulla, these fiber they go they uh, shift to the other side, okay, there, there are contralateral fibers and there are ipsilateral fibers. And these fibers, uh, the medial, MSVT, most of the fibers, they terminate in the cervical, uh, uh, cervical uh, cord. But you have a part of it which travels downwards towards the, uh, lum, uh, to the, towards the thoracic uh, segment. They are generally, they, what, do they, what do they function? They generally bring the axial, that is the neck, and the uh, trunk under the control of the uh, labyrinth, but not the limbs. In contrast to that, the lateral vestibular spinal tract, these are basically an excited, they carry the excitatory uh, axons and they are exclusively ipsilateral. And um, most of these fibers uh, of the lateral vestibular spinal tract arises, originates from the lateral nucleus with a slight uh, contribution coming from the descending vestibular nucleus. And these travel the entire length of the spinal column. And they not only bring the axial, but also the proximal limbs under the control of the labyrinth. But it's not only that the, uh, the, the, uh, there's a connection between the, the vestibule and the spine through the uh, vestibular spinal tract. But there are also alternative track from which the fibers or the signals go from the vestibular nuclei to the spine that is through another pathway that is the reticulospinal tract. These reticulospinal tract, they again, they are, they are bilateral tracks. They have, uh, according to the site of origin, they, we have the medial reticulospinal tract and the lateral spinolateral tract. Now, uh, that is what uh, these. These are two tracks which goes, which carry signals from 
from, uh, from top to bottom. But again, we have another set of signals. So when you have to maintain a balance, you have, a, you have to take inputs from the visual inputs, the labyrinthine, in, uh, the uh, vestibular inputs, and also the proprioceptive inputs to maintain your balance. Now, the proprioceptive inputs come from, uh, from, uh, from two, two ways, from the spinal, uh, spinal column. That is, one is the ipsilateral. We have two pathways, that's the ipsilateral and the contralateral. The ipsilateral, which is generally from the cervical dorsal root, and it travels upward and ends and, and supplies the, uh, I mean, gives a collateral to the unilateral descending, the medial uh, vestibular nuclei on the way toward the cerebellum. And we have the, the other, uh, the, the contralateral. These rises from the entire length of the uh, uh, spinal level. Generally, the ipsilateral is mainly from the ipsilateral, from the, that's from the neck. But you have the, uh, the contralateral, which, uh, which gives send signals right from the uh, lower, lower part of the, uh, or an entire length of the spinal column. And they, they tra travel on the, uh, they, give, uh, they give collaterals to the la uh, contralateral side of the lateral vestibular nuclei and the descending vestibular nuclei on the way towards the cerebellum. So that's about, in brief, about the, these connections. Let's see how do you want. How do you? Uh, how would you like to assess? How to assess uh, balance control? You have two type of tasks which we perform on a day-to-day -day basis. They, these are generally the static balance control. Static balance control is when you're standing upright, maintaining your balance upright when the base is when the uh, when the surface is firm. Now to do this, we have two methods, uh, two techniques to measure. One is the, by using the force plate and the body-mounted uh, sensors. Now the the uh, force plate they they measure the, the force exerted at the feet on a, when, uh, uh, when you're, you're standing on a firm surface. Now, by estimating these forces, you can also estimate the, the, the sway of the center of mass when your surface is, uh, is uh, firm. Then you have the other way to assess is through the body-mounted sensors. These body-mounted sensors, are more, um, uh, they give more quali uh, qualitative information about the balance during gait and stance. Like the force plate, they, they give you more information about only in the stance. But when you do body mounted uh, sensors, they give you more information also about the, your, your uh, balance during gait. What is the, then we have another task, that is the dynamic postural control. Dynamic postural control is maintaining an upright balance when, uh, when the surface in which you're standing is moving or there's a perturbation of stance. Now, the perturbation of stance can happen in two ways. It can be external force, where the surface on which you're standing is made to move, as you're doing in dynamic postulography, or else from an internal, uh, internal force. So internal force, when you're, you're, you're making an involuntary movement, or else uh, you're making some, an, uh, some anticipatory postural adjustment. So these, when, uh, uh, when these are this is the second type of a task. And how do you? Uh, analyze this uh, dynamic uh, po uh, postural control that is by the system called the dynamic postural system. Here there is a perturbation of the uh, of your surface in one direction or the other and it gives you the uh, the muscle response involved in the vestibular uh, in a vestibular uh, uh, disorder. Now let's see what are the directional attributes or the or rather the, fun, uh, the motor aspect of vestibular uh, spinal system to balance. And these we will also apply it clinically. You see, when there's a vestibular, whenever there's a vestibular loss, there's also a considerable amount of uh, instability when the mass is moved, uh, moved in either in inner direction, uh, left to right or thing. So what we are basically we are talking about in vestibular spinal uh, control is basically in these, these movements which we make. There's a pitch movement and a roll movement. So these are the two movements which we, uh, we uh, often perform. So we will see how the vestibular spinal uh, tract uh, they manage these, uh, or how they, they they manage these two movements to stabilize the body. Now, what is the uh, the pitch? So, the pitch is like now, uh, like when you stand for, uh, in one position and your base is perturbed backward. So, what is the uh, reflex? What happens uh, when it's perturbed backwards? Your 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 knee tends to flex a bit, and then your body, your your trunk it flexes, so you maintain that balance. When you're thrown backward, you balance. But what happens when you have a vestibular loss? When you have a vestibular loss, when you, when you perturb the, the, the limbs, for example, when you perturb the limb backward, 
you completely, there's just an excessive backward movement. So there's excessive throw behind, and then you're, there's a body, your body is thrown excessively forward, and there's a reflex action which happens, which tries to bring your body back, and it, again, your body gets thrown backward, and you tend to have a backward fall. So why does this activity happen? Because when you are uh, maintaining a balance when your body, when your when the surface is backward, is that your ex, uh, the tibialis anterior and your uh, say your uh, quadriceps muscle they go into contraction, which brings your leg to flexion. Okay. Now when you have vestibular loss, now this action is uh, is decreased, so you tend to have more of extension, restriction of extension. At the same time, when your body is thrown, your your body should be. Uh, Pulled for uh, flex forward. So in vestibular loss, what happened? That flexion is increased. Okay, there's more of an increasing, or, or rather, more of activity of the abdominal muscles. So it's, you, you tend to flex more, and then the reflex action of the spinal muscles it tend to extend, uh, increase activity, and then you extend more. So there's a increase in rotation of the leg, increase forward pitching, and then with the reflex, increase extension, and you tend to fall. So this is what happened. Uh, in a vestibular loss. Now, what's the role? How does the uh, how does the role takes place, and how does the balance takes place here, and what happens uh, in vestibular loss? Now, we are taking a role. What happens normally? What normal is that? Suppose your 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 surface is moved to the side. That's this is the role. Okay, so it's moved uphill. So, what happened to to maintain the posture? You tend to you tend to fall. You know. So, what happened here? You tend to flex your your uphill. So, if you put up this way, your left high say example this gets flexed to maintain and this gets extended so you maintain that stand and then the, this pelvis drops back okay it drops to the downhill because of the movement this way this hip drops downhill but at the same time your your trunk you try to maintain the balance you tend to rotate uphill so you maintain in this kind of position so you maintain the uh, center of uh, mass in the center and you you uh, you become upright you stay upright now what happens in a vestibular loss? In a vestibular loss, all these activities go haywire. You don't, have, you have less extension. You cannot flex this limb, and there's less extension of this. So what happens? This you cannot flex. You cannot, you cannot maintain this balance. And then this uh, downhill movement of the pelvis increases, and then the the trunk, the trunk which is supposed to be uh, twisted and to maintain the, the to oppose the downhill movement, the hip, your trunk should go uphill. But that reflexes also. Eliminated and your body tends to rotate more towards downhill and you tend to fall. So this is what happens in uh, in the motor aspect. So we see that uh, and uh, it's shown that the central control for these responses for both the roll and the pitch they are uh, organized separately in the central nervous system. Now that is a uh, that is the motor part and let's see how the sensory part. Now suppose now we, we the signal has to come uh, from both the vestibule or from the labyrinth and from the proprioceptive, so that both these, uh, these signals reach the brain, so that the brain can interpret what's happening, what position is supposed to maintain, and which muscles are which, where to, uh, what kind of signals to send to which place. So now the signals, signals suppose if they occur simultaneously, both from the labyrinth and from the proprioceptive. Uh, if they occur simultaneously and if they occur sequentially, what will happen? So if, if it occurs sequentially and the, these signals are processed sequentially in the brain, it gives one advantage is that uh, in, case, in case one signal is lost, suppose vestibular loss, so the brain, since it's, it's processed, it, the, the signal arrives sequentially and it's processed sequentially, so the brain can use the uh, more of the uh, proprioceptive information and then try to maintain the balance, but rather than when the signal occurs sequentially. So let's assume that happens, and let's see what happens uh, in uh, in uh, actuality with the timing of these uh, signals coming from from both the vestibule and the uh, proprioception in regards to these movement. That is the pitch and the roll. So what happens that when you when your body pitches? Uh, these are two various experiments which have been uh, which have been done. So when the body pitches. Uh, when your body is pitched, so like your leg is put backward, the body tends. Uh, now, what happens? The first of all, your uh, the first movement which occurs is your head, your neck movement that is set into it's uh, set into a linear acceleration. 
linear 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 acceleration within a, uh, with a delay of about 10 millisecond and after that what happens that the trunk sends the propulsive information a little later than the uh, information coming from the from the uh, neck so this because this happened because the the, the trunk is pitched about 50 millisecond be after the pitching of the head so this is pitched later so what happens is that the so this shows that the signals from both they arrive, they reach the uh, the center of control in a sequential manner and they are therefore process also sequentially now what is the advantage of having the sequential uh, sequential processing and uh, the signal reaching sequentially is that the advantage is in investible loss is that they an individual will use a third uh, third uh, information okay suppose vestibular loss so it will now not only depend on the proprioceptive information it will it will get another information to maintain the balance that is from the what is called the load receptors now the load receptors are there in the spinal column so and they they register the upward and downward thrust of the surface so now the in investible loss they will also utilize the proprioceptive coming from the ankle and then also from the load receptors so now we will see what the difference is with uh, with a roll now when your body is sent to roll when your body is sent to roll now it is seen that these signals coming from the proprioception and the vestibule they occur almost similarly parallelly so when they occur uh, parallelly this there's no uh, difference in that uh, signal from these both uh, from the uh, proprioception and the vestibule is the, the the difference is very short so it does not allow this uh, the, the third uh, in uh, signals to come into play to help uh, to help each other in the loss of one of these signals so what what is the effect on the on stance and uh, and gait and these are very uh, these now we are coming to more clinical applications when you have a bilateral vestibular loss in a bilateral vestibular loss you ask a person to stand he can almost he can almost maintain his balance even while standing or else even while eyes closing when he gives a, when he puts in a lot of concentration he can still manage manage it, uh, to stand upright without falling now how will you uh, try to dis, uh, disrupt this you can disrupt this balance and check in a, suppose in a bilateral vestibular loss by asking the person to stand in a, in a foamy foam support so in the foam support what happens that this person now who has been able to stand uh, erect while while on a firm solid and a firm base now when he stands on a foamy balance he'll tend to fall now why is this this is because that uh, the uh, the board i mean the the person with bilateral vestibular loss will depend a lot on on the ankle proprioceptors but the ankle proprioceptors are not very effective in uh, giving the information of the body tilt when he's standing on a on a foamy support okay so testing a person on a on a on a solid on a firm firm solid stance on a surface and on a foamy support this is a very sensitive test to detect the bilateral vestibular loss but remember that is it is not specific again because you can have it in you can uh, you can get uh, this problem when you're dealing with a patient with uh, diabetic nephro uh, neuropathy or in patient with uh, spinal uh, spinal cerebellar ataxia so you can you can have this problem now we need uh, we did by by doing this we can we can differentiate between vestibular loss and proprioceptive loss because as i told you vestibular loss they will depend on the ankle uh on the ankle uh, proprioceptive informations also so because now when you when you ask a person to stand on a on a foamy support the ankle uh, proprioceptors are weak they're not effective so that is unreliable the visual is cut off so they will not be able to maintain balance but if the person has a proprioceptive loss the person will stand on a solid firm base and he closes his eyes he'll still not be able to maintain balance because there because the perhaps uh, proprioception from the uh, from the lower limb they have poor now but how do you identify uh, the pro proprioceptive loss that is by simple test you do that is the which is very cheap 
and easily available is by doing the I will just show you a video here by doing a tuning fork test. So, just this video is to show you how to exactly do how to elicit this uh, test in a correct manner. So, generally you can use a 128 hertz uh, tuning fork this is a video downloaded from YouTube but I will just show you the, only the important part and then place it in the board what will then do is so what you do is you set the, vib uh, the, the tuning fork to vibration and you put the vibration at the at the toe and ask the person whether they can sense the vibration or not okay and if he sends vibration after that you can what you can do is you can stop the vibration of the tuning fork and ask the person whether he can still uh, feel the vibration or not you can do this with eyes closed so you become more uh, more sensitive so if the uh, say if you're doing the test in the uh, proprioceptive uh, i mean the vibration test in the in the toe and you find that it's absent you can go ahead and on the dorsum the foot on the ankle you can go on the shin you can go up to the patella so this you can do these vibration tests and try to find the level at which at which these uh, these uh, vibration senses are lost but at the same time is it uh, is it sufficient just to see that proprioception by doing this vibration test or whether I think because you need also because of proprioception whether is it is it proprioception loss or whether some some problem with the joints. So, we need to find the we need to do a small test again which is an additional test that is to do the test of the joint position this is a very easy test because this will give you the it will tell you the the status of the joints and how do you do the joint uh, the joint test is again a very simple test to do. So, this test is uh, like you hold uh, you hold the, the toe with your fingers avoiding to touch the other the other toes and then you can ask the person to close his eyes and then move the toes move the toes up and down and ask the person to try to recognize in which direction the toe is moving. So, that way uh, that way you, you can assess the status of the, uh, the vestibule and differentiate it from the proprioceptive loss and then again you you should always check for the joint position. Uh, since we as, as I have told you before that there is a lot of problem with the uh, in, in, in the uh, balancing role rather than compared to pitch ok. So, what happens that when you see a person with uh, inst uh, when you check a person with uh, instability during task you, uh, then you see them when you ask them to walk. So, just walk 3 meters front or back with eyes closed you will see that they have a problem with the pitch. So, if you come if they compare with the normal subject they will tend these people uh, these patient will tend to pitch forward these are simple tasks. So, they tend to have more pitching. So, because you are not involving a uh, this kind of movement since just this movement. So, you tend they, the, the patient tend to to maintain the balance by trying to pitching by increasing the pitching movement more. But now, when you ask them to do a more complex uh, 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 task like make him sit get up and walk there it involves the movement of the uh, the, the, the roll movement it is in this in this uh, in these patient they really tend to fall and they when you do ask them to do a complex gait they will always tend to have more of these roll and more of falls. Now, when to test when to test them uh, it is suggested that uh, in a vestibular loss you test them at the onset and then again at 3 weeks. Why at 3 weeks at 3 weeks because by then spontaneous nystagmus has settled patient has recovered by 3 weeks generally they recover from the, uh, the no normal control of stance and third is that the neurochemical changes which are involved with uh, uh, compensation they are complete by 3, three weeks and again at, and again you test them at 3 months. You test them 3 months the reason is that uh, the VOR response for low acceler acceleration. So, they, they have been uh, they have gained uh, symmetry by then, but you see that when you test them at 3 months these uh, for simple gait for simple gait as I told you walking forward and backward they maintain a uh, they have maintained a balance. Okay, so, they, they generally recover, but for complex gait they do not recover by 3 months they take much longer time, 
because there, there it involves a, a more complex uh, movement where they have, where they have a more of roll movement and they have to uh, coordinate with the, uh, with the ocular, ocular reflex. So, coming to the conclusion, we have to differentiate first with uh, between the, uh, first of all we see very few uh, patients with bilateral vestibular loss and more of unilateral and even if they have a bilateral vestibular loss, first they would always develop a unilateral and then go on to have bilateral loss. Okay, then uh, we have to differentiate between the uh, vestibular loss from the proprioceptive loss that is by, by doing these three tests testing on a, on a uh, asking the person to stand on a, uh, a firm base or and on a foamy base on a foam support and then you test the vibration senses and you test the joint joint position and as i told you because it's related to the the this movement the, the the timing sensory timing and the way the motor motor responds so that you have more imbalance in the when when it involves a roll movement than when you have a uh, then when you compare with the pitch, pitching perturbation, okay. And as I told you uh, initially, that because of the difference in, in the in the pathway, the, the difference in the uh, from the origin origin of these new uh, the the nuclear origin, because they are different from that of the vestibular ocular, uh, ocular reflex uh, uh, track, so their recovery uh, the, the compensation is is different, and Therefore, you cannot uh, judge the person suffering from vestibular spinal tract deficiencies. You cannot judge their recovery from the recovery of the from the amplitude of these uh, vestibular ocular reflexes. Therefore, just by testing, because of this easy compensation, okay. So uh, at stands especially. So when you're testing for recovery, uh, it is it is not a wise thing to test only on stands. Just saying, but okay, a patient is stand, so he's recovered from whatever deficit he is. So it's always better to test both at stands and performing both the simple and the uh, complex gait. Uh, so I've covered the, uh, the simple gait and the complex gait too. So with that, I would end my presentation. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, in proprioceptive loss, because of the sensory, uh, because of the sensory things, uh, uh, because of sens the, the timing on the sensory inputs, because as I uh, told that when when you are set into pitch. The sense, the timing and sensory from the vestibule and the labyrinth, they occur sequentially. So what happens when you, when you have one particular loss, replacement of that loss by this, this uh, by the second input is much better than in a roll. See what happens in a in a in a pitch. In a pitch is that from the vestibule, from the uh, vestibule, the inputs occurs first. And then from the proprioception occurs, uh, it, it occurs. I mean, or arrives a little bit later. So what happened? It gets an additional input coming from the load receptors in the spine. So it gets, it can be replaced rather than. So you, so you say that it is basically it is because it is coming from cervical uh, proprioceptors. So that is compensated earlier than the those that coming from the ankle proprioceptors. Uh, no, no. What I'm telling is, in a pitch position, when you're when you're pitching, the signals, okay, the signal arrive in the center sec uh, uh, sequentially. It arrives first, so you have a short duration, more duration of time for the brain to detect from the load receptors. So it gets an additional uh, input. So that's why they they recover and they the the, the uh, imbalance is lesser as you compare. In a roll, in a roll, both these inputs from the vestibule and from the proprioception they occur almost parallelly. So at the same time, so the brain does not get. I mean, it does not get an, an excess uh, input from the load receptors in the spine. So that's why they have a little bit more imbalance in a roll rather than in pitch. Uh, 